what is the issue of Balochistan and what is the problem of Pakistan? These are the two questions I'd like to ask you. You guys might be aware of the French team who discovered the fossil remains of the largest mammal that ever walked in Earth, in Dera Bukhti, Balochistan. The mammal was called Balochitherum. The mammal weighed 20,000 kilograms and was six meters tall and had existed 300, uh, 30 million years ago. Today, under Pakistani military excesses, the Baluch are engaged in a David and Goliath struggle for survival so that the story of Baluch terror is not repeated. Pakistan's grievance with Pakistan began on day one. Day one was not August 14, the birth of Pakistan. Some of you know that Baluchistan was granted independence on August 11, 1947, separately from Pakistan and India. Baluchistan's day one with Pakistan was March 27, 1948. Things that are, get etched in the collective memory of people are hard to erase. March 27, 1948 is one such day for the Baluch people. I regret to note that the open-minded Pakistani intellectuals, writers and authors are in a state of denial on this dark chapter of Baluchistan's history. The first uprising against uh, the forcible annexation was launched by Prince Agha Abdul Karim. There have been four uprisings since then that shows Baloch have not forgotten March 28, 1948. A rape committed 60 years ago does not turn into marriage, according to former Governor and Chief Minister of Baluchistan, Nawab Akbar Khan. After such painful merger, one would expect extreme care and caution in dealing with Baluchistan, not the dumping of bodies. One would have expected at least the velvet glove, but we have faced, still facing the iron fist. The fact is that Pakistan rulers of Baluchistan sitting on the military general headquarters in Rawalpindi have treated the Baloch much more brutally than England ever did. In nearly 110 years of indirect British rule, did not kill as many Baloch as Pakistan did in the 64 years of occupation. Baluchistan is in the grips of a tsunami of human rights violations by Pakistan. Baluchistan has the highest number of enforced disappearances in the world today. Baluchistan is where Pakistan has been conducting a ruthless secret dirty war, which the Amnesty International calls kill and dump policy. Baluchistan is where highly respected civilian leaders like Shaykh Nawab Khan Bukhti are called pygamies by military coup leaders of Pakistan, like General Musharraf, who could not even pronounce the word Baluch correctly. Too much blood has flowed and, uh, down the Bolan River since then, so to speak. A sea of blood of the best sons from Nawab Nawaz Khan and his seven sons, Lamant Khan, Safar Khan, Nawab Akhtar Khan, Bukhti, Balach Mari, Ulam Mahmud, Baloch, Lala Munir, and thousands of unknown soldiers now divides the Baloch people and the Pakistani rulers in Islamabad and Rawal Pindi. Entire families are being wiped out as I speak before you. There are scores of families in Baluchistan who have lost two or more male members to the barbaric operations of Frontier Corps, military intelligence and ISI, and Pakistani death squads. The Lango brothers, the Agrani brothers, the Karim brothers, all paid a price simply for being Baluch. There are many cases where fathers and sons have been killed simultaneously. <coughs> Even women are not spared. My sister-in-law, Zamar Domki, and her 11-year-old daughter, Jana Domki, were ruthlessly killed from the streets of Karachi by the Pakistan intelligence services to break the will of her brother, Brandon. I must assure you, we will never forget this. Peaceful professors who hold books in their hands and are being targeted by Pakistani death squads. Professor Sabad Ashtiari, widely respected and loved, was killed on June the 1st last year. He was known as being the Noam Chomsky of Baluchistan. More than 400 writers, intellectuals, journalists, lawyers, doctors, students have been killed since July 2010. So the military changed gear and began targeting towns and villages of Baluchistan. Such brutality is unprecedented. The irony is when Pakistan military was conducting a brutal operation to kill Nawab Akhtar Khan Bukhti. At the same time, top Pakistani generals were making arrangements for the safe stay for Osama bin Laden next door to the Pakistan military academy. Musharraf was inaugurating supply of gas from Sui when he was told about Bukhti's killing. He was infamously quoted as saying, well done, boys. I am sure Pakistani generals will pay for their actions eventually. I do not think that they can put the international community the life imprisonment of Shakil Afridi, who helped trace bin Laden, will most certainly carry a price tag. The problem is Pakistan military generals still do not get it.
In quality food, Middle Eastern languages, Stan means land of. There are six countries that are named after their people. These countries are Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and like Baluchistan and Kurdistan. The two stateless countries, these countries have hundreds and even thousands of years of history. But what does Pakistan mean? It means the land of the pure in Urdu and Persian. And where did this word come from? It is coined by Chaudhary Ramatali on January 28, 1933, about 85 miles northeast of here. Number three, Humberstone Road in Cambridge. The letter I was added later for ease of pronunciation. The name Pakistan was meant to portray Muslims as pure and overwhelming majority, and non-Muslims of India as impure. One of the greatest thinkers of the time, All India Congress President Maulana Abdul Azad, in an interview with Suresh Kashmiri, forewarned, we must remember that an entity conceived in hatred will last only as long as the hatred lasts. We Baloch highly respect Maulana Azad. I think every Pakistani should read his prophetic book, India Wins Freedom. Thank you very much.